Tough coalition talks are underway in Germany as the post-Merkel era begins. Now, the Social Democrats, led by Olaf Scholz, have claimed a narrow victory in national elections. It's the first time in almost two decades that they'll be leading Europe's largest economy. But they need help. They're looking to form an alliance with two other parties. Die Wählerinnen und Wähler haben auch sehr klar gesprochen. Sie haben gesagt, wer die nächste Regierung bilden soll. Sie hat drei Parteien gestärkt, die Sozialdemokratische Partei, die Grünen und die FDP. Und deshalb ist das der sichtbare Auftrag, den die Bürgerinnen und Bürger dieses Landes formuliert haben. Diese drei sollen auch die nächste Regierung führen. Trent Murray joins us live now for more on this development. Trent, how long are these coalition talks expected to drag on for? Yeah, well, Dawn, if history tells us anything, it could be quite a while. Speaking after the results first started to filter out last night, both of the main parties said they'd like to see coalition negotiations wrap up by at least Christmas. But party insiders are saying that is an optimistic view. In fact, it could take much longer. The reason for that is because really we are trying to bridge differences here between parties that have very different outlooks uh, on Germany's challenges and the challenges of the world. As you mentioned, in order to try and get a majority in that that building behind me there in Parliament, either the Conservative CDU or the social, uh, the, the left-wing Social Democrats are going to need to form a three-way coalition uh, with the Green Party and with the FDP, which is a pro-business kind of small government party. They all have quite different outlooks on the way they'd like to do things. The Greens, for example, would like to see uh, an increase in renewable energy as well as major investment in Germany's infrastructure to fight the climate uh, crisis. Whereas the FDP, they don't want to see any more tax rises and they also don't want to see Germany's debt uh, cap raised at all. So you can probably pick up a theme there, Dawn. One party wants to spend a lot of money. The other party wants to save a lot of money. Trying to get them in together is going to be difficult, meaning these negotiations could go on for quite a while and Angela Merkel will have to stay in place as a caretaker chancellor while that happens. So different imperatives for different parties, Trent. But what changes can we really expect after nearly two decades of Angela Merkel's Conservative government? Look, I think in the immediate term, you won't see any major radical shifts from Germany in the way it likes to deal uh, with its partners around the world. Olaf Scholz from the centre-left Democrats, it is worth saying, has worked alongside Angela Merkel as her finance minister in a coalition government for the past eight years. So he has been at the decision-making uh, table for all of Germany's major foreign policy challenges of recent times. And he has said he would like to pretty well continue on the same course, big on transatlanticism, i.e. working with Washington, but also turning much of the focus to the Indo-Pacific where Germany is showing an increased interest uh, with a new strategy it recently released. But it's worth noting uh, that, of course, that's his view. But in order to get those smaller parties on board, he will need to make concessions to them. Uh, we already know from Christian Lindner, the leader of the FDP, uh, that he would like Germany to take a tougher line on China, for example. He recently said that Germany can't be separating the issues of business and human rights like it has under Angela Merkel, and that Germany needs to, quote, stop dealing with China with children's gloves on. So uh, it could be a, a challenging period foreign policy wise. He, either side is going to need to make concessions. And so it is worth watching what changes could happen as those concessions are made. Trent, thank you very much. Trent Murray there in Berlin.